AJ, how you doing? Hey, good to see you, John. Good to see you. So um, this is Jay Hughes. This is my loan officer coach. Um, I kind of got some info on his background. Um, I've been working with him for the last couple months. Um, he's the director of business development at Axia Home Loans, um, business developer, coach. He coaches um, Matt Beckwith, who's one of our partners who I interviewed last time at Kersey's Corner, this new kind of YouTube channel I'm starting. Um, That's right. I forgot you. I forgot you interviewed Matt. That's great. Yep. So um, he's his coach. And so if that goes, you know, speaks for anything, he closed 268 million last year. So Not he's, good he's year. One, <laughs> one of the best coaches. Um, he coaches about 250 people individually per year. And he also does group teachings where he teaches thousands of loan officers all over the country and um, has a very good intake on, you know, mindset, goal setting to get to the finish line when it comes to closing business in real estate and, and sales in general. So um, I kind of value his opinion. So I wanted to bring him on for, you know, a couple of minutes and have a comment yeah. with you. Thanks for taking the time, Jay. Absolutely. Yeah. Good to, good to talk to you. Yeah. And um, so one of the things that he kind of brought to my attention in one of our coaching sessions and in, in this new market that we're in with higher rates, a lot of people can kind of have, you know, adverse mindset. We had two years of incredible boom that everyone's riding off of. And a lot of people find themselves a little squirrely right now with, you know, how are we going to operate and then how we're going to, uh, you know, move forward. And, you know, one of the things you said is, you know, to be optimistic and to be positive. So I kind of wanted to talk about that because that kind of yeah. was um, meaningful to me that you said. And I think the, the title of this I'd like to name is leveraging optimism. Cause I yeah, think if you leverage optimism, you can go a super far way in this business and in any business, whether you're in, in sales in any other aspect, or if you're a real loan officer, client, anybody. So um, that's kind of the topic of the conversation. Yeah. Um, do you want to, in fact, I, let me grab my mic. I forgot to pull my mic over. So um, let's, maybe I'll just tee this up real quick and, and just, you know, those of you that are watching, like the reason John and I first started talking about optimism as a topic is I forwarded I forwarded you a document maybe a couple of weeks ago, John. That uh, it's called the MetLife case study, and um, and it, I think it'd be great. Maybe what we could do is at when you're um, sending your the link to the video out, like let's include a link to that MetLife case study because that's just a one page tool, and I think it's just it's a really it's a really powerful. Um, case study on on the power of optimism and uh so real quick i'll i'll just share with your uh the folks that are watching a little bit about that and so essentially what metlife did and this was probably uh 15 years ago something like that um so metlife began to look at their um their sales they have a most big insurance companies have a very extensive like training process for you know for new agents and they began to evaluate their talent and they were trying to figure out like <clears throat> why do we you know why are some people successful in this business and some don't and um, of course like every company uh, is should be trying to evaluate uh, that question and what's so fascinating was fascinating to me anyway was that MetLife uh, just to just cut right to the quick what they determined was that optimism was was the key indicator of a person's success in this business, and that <clears throat> those uh, those individuals who came in with an optimistic mindset <clears throat> um, outsold, outperformed uh, the uh, uh, life insurance agents who came in <clears throat> who did not have an optimistic mindset, and that was regardless of the education. Uh, it was independent of of the uh, experience levels of the of the you know the different <clears throat> life insurance agents it, it was optimism this trait of optimism was the determining factor and they ended up out like they they stay in the business longer and they um i, I want to say they <clears throat> in the first two years it's like a it's like a 60 percent um increase in production when you're looking at 
uh, agents who have an optimistic mindset versus those that do not. They were saying <laughs> and too, so, like it was even the people that failed the test, if they were optimistic when they did pass, whatever the insurance test is, they were immensely more successful than the people who may have aced the test that were negative, right? Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. In fact, here's one of the stats that says, uh, consultant, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm, I'll, I'll take a sip here. It says <laughs> agents who scored in the top 10% for optimism sold 88% more than those that were ranked in the bottom 10% uh, of optimism. I mean, think about that. People who score in the top 10% of optimism sell 88% more than those who are in the bottom 10%. Right. Um, that is an, it's an unbelievable stat. So again, yeah, and um, I think that trait, can, short... that trait can become, it's inherent in some people, but I also think it can be taught and it can be, you, bet. you know, it can be learned and it can be, you know, engaged upon. So that's something that I think people, real estate agents, loan officers, people in sales, whoever can engage that in their life to obtain positive results. Right. Absolutely. Um, and um, yeah, again, we're trying to keep this today really condensed down to five, 10 minutes. Yeah. And so like we, we you know, you and I could spend an hour and, and just <laughs> scratch the surface, but, but really we want to like, I want to try to provide just a little bit of um, yeah, I would say encouragement for those that maybe who don't have an optimistic mindset that doesn't come naturally, which by the way, that's me. I, I was not gifted with like just a, um, an optimistic viewpoint on life. I, I've always said that I'm a realist, um, but I think even that over the last five years or so, I've, I've told people I'm, I'm really not even a realist. I think I do tend to identify problems. It's like, um, which can be, a, that, that can be great. That can be like when I'm coaching with you, like one of the things we do is we're trying to evaluate issues that are going on in your business. And, and so like being able to identify those, that's really helpful, but that's not optimism optimism truly is like when you're faced with circumstances that are difficult it's like um um it's not just seeing this like a silver lining but it's believing it's believing that there is a path there is mm -hmm. a solution to the problem there is a way to get around this particular obstacle and uh and i wanted to share a quote with you i, th I think this is this is one of my favorite quotes um and um so it's this it says human beings always act, feel, and perform in accordance with what they imagine to be true <clears throat> about themselves and their environment. And I'm going I'm to repeat that again. Human beings always act, feel, and perform in accordance with what they believe or imagine to be true about themselves and their environment. Here's how this applies to optimism. So what that quote is saying um, is whatever I believe to be true, whatever I imagine to be true, like that's gonna inform my feelings, um, my actions, my motivations. And so, <clears throat> and that works, it cuts both ways. So if I am, if I believe, as I'm faced with a challenging cir uh, circumstance, if I believe that there's no solution and that it's gonna be like, this loan just went sideways and I'm going to have, like, if I believe that this underwriter has it out for me, if I believe that um, there's, it's going to be so challenging to, to identify a problem, like my feelings are going to be impacted by that as well as my actions, my mm -hmm. performance, my motivations. If I believe that there, that there has to be a solution to this, there, I mean, like, um, there is. And that it's like, it doesn't, it's like, it does impact our emotions, but more than that, it, it's like that optimistic mindset, it ends up impacting the actual actions that we take. Mm -hmm. And um, so the importance of optimism in that sense can't be overstated. And you hear that so many times, you know, like, it's just that think it, feel it, do it mindset. And if you truly believe that it's going to happen, then it, it, it becomes meaningful in your heart. And then, you know, the the outside surroundings make it happen. It comes to fruition. If you truly believe in it and you do the little steps every single day to make whatever situation happen, if you want to, you know, if you're a real estate agent and you want to sell 
75 million by yourself, you can make it happen if you just believe in it and you you truly make that mindset every single day. If you want to buy a house for the first time, if you believe in that every single day and you you do the little steps, you know, every single day oh, that- it takes to make it happen. It's just every single success book talks about every little mini, it's not it's not well, doing it all at once. It's the little <clears throat> steps every single day that it takes to get there, you know? So that's exactly right. It's exactly right. And it's why that quote is so important because this isn't like what we are not saying today is that there is just some like magic bullet. And <clears throat> if you will just, if you'll just simply believe that will take care of all your problems. We're not saying that, but we, we are saying, and that it's what you were describing here just a moment ago. It's like, um, you, well, we know this, we know that you can't do it if you don't believe that you can, whatever it is, whether it's shoot, you know, it's like so many different, like we could talk about how this impacts sports, golf in particular is such a huge sport when it comes to like visualization and believing in, um, in what you're trying to accomplish on this swing and being able to see that and envision that. Right. But, um, but just simply believing like, like, uh, saying like emotionally, like, well, I, I want to, you know, I want to earn $500,000 this year. Like, like just throwing a number out there and believing that we're not saying that that's going to um, magically uh, allow that to, to happen in your life. But we are saying that if you don't believe it, you don't have a shot. And so right. because this, because what we believe impacts uh, how we feel, how we act and how we perform and our motivations, it's like, that's the first set when we're talking about identifying a goal. It's like, I've got to believe, first, I got to want it. I've got to believe it, that it's achievable. That's that optimistic mindset. And then that informs my feelings and my emotions and my, uh, my actions. Now we start taking the, the steps day by day that helps us achieve it. And that's what you were describing. It doesn't come all at once. It, it, it takes, there's incremental steps along the way. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but that optimistic mindset is what it's what it's the ignition that triggers that. Yep. And so, and I don't want to like dive in too deep. We could talk about this all day and pump ourselves up, but there's one take I kind of want to switch gears on that's super important that I want to deliver. And this goes out to, you know, home buyers that are out there feeling discouraged because there's no inventory, right? Everywhere is yeah. starving for inventory and everyone's like, you know, I'm pre-approved, but I can't win a house. And same thing goes with real estate agents. You know, they're trying to find houses. They're going to 10, 12 showings a day, putting 10, 12 offers together a day and still losing. What is, you know, how can we apply the same mindset to yeah. that, that mentality? What, what message would you give to those home buyers, to those agents out yeah. there that so would you know, help with that? Yeah, no, that's so good. That's such a great question because that's like, that's where the rubber meets the road. Um, And like, again, because I'm not a natural optimist, it's so easy for me to say like, in situations like that, like I could easily fall into the trap of just going, well, like the reality is um, inventory is so diminished here that like, I'm probably not going to get a house. Or if I'm an agent, then I'm probably not going to be able to find a home for a homeowner. But like, um, the reality is that while while inventory has uh, you know has shrunk, there are still transactions that are happening. There's transactions that are happening every single day. And so, like to take an optimistic mindset would be to say, like, well, let's let's really identify the truth. The truth is, yeah, it's going to be harder for me as a homeowner. It's going to be harder to to find the right home. But like our home buy, our first time home buyers buying homes right now, yes. Um, is it as easy as it was six months ago? No, but like the reality is it's, it is possible, absolutely possible. So like, I'm going to be optimistic about that. And, and, and again, this is where that starts to impact my emotions, my actions, my motivations. It's like, if I believe that it's possible, well, now I'm good. I'm in the game, right? Like I'm going to start asking questions. Like one of the things to ask would be like, well, like maybe I need to talk to, um, an agent, if, if, if we're talking about agents who are trying to uh, identify properties for their, uh, you know, for their buyers, and they're having a hard time doing it, well, uh, find an agent appear in your office or 
uh, you know, that's in your local market, who, who found some properties for borrowers last month or a few months ago, talk to them about it. Like, what did they do? Were they doing anything differently? Um, because there are some proactive steps that, that you can take as a home buyer, as an agent, and, and do some work that, that other buyers, other agents are not willing to do. But again, it's that it's the belief up front that there's a solution. That's what gives you the opportunity to then take actions that other people are unwilling to take. I love what the point that you just brought up, talking to other agents that are having success, because that's how I've driven my whole mortgage career yeah. is this working off other people that are having success. And those people have that same mindset, you know, like the people that you've coached, the Matt Beckwith, the, you know, George Temples, the, the people that are really gigantic in the business and the areas that wherever you're doing business, they're not there by being negative. I promise you. Nope. And the top, the top agents in whatever area, they're not there. They're not doing business by being negative. I can, no, they're not. I can assure you. And the ones that are negative, you're going to get left behind. And that's, you have to be. What? You have to have this mindset. You need to talk to people who do to get inspired. Cause I mean, I try to be as positive I can be. Sometimes I'm feeling, you know, negative too. Everyone does, I think. But if you just keep the momentum going, you know, you can truly get ahead in this game and in this market for sure. The people that that produce in the mortgage and real estate industry, without a doubt, those that are at the top are are outstanding when it comes to identifying um solutions to problems and obstacles they because it's like that's our whole business is i mean your job every single day john is like how do i so how am i going to solve 18 problems today i mean that's just the nature of the business mm -hmm. and so um i'll close with this story yeah and i think i told you this um a couple of weeks ago but it's um it's one of my favorite stories on this topic so <clears throat> uh, most people that are listening probably have heard of todd duncan uh, Todd is one of the best, he was one of the best originators of all time. And then he's been in a, a, a coaching consulting, uh, you know, business that he started, I think, 15, 20 years ago, probably now. Uh, I think he's, he's, he's probably the preeminent, um, you know, coach in the mortgage and real estate industry, does an amazing job. He's, uh, he's written several books, if you haven't written, uh, listen to any or yeah, read or listen to any of his books. Those would be yeah. those are great because he he addresses mindset. But um, I met Todd probably 15 years ago, and uh, it was just this really small group setting. And he was telling a story about back in the late 70s, and um, he was an originator. He was pretty you know he was relatively new in the business. Rates were at 16 percent, something like that. And um, of course, like in an environment like that, real estate agents. Uh, mortgage loan officers, the banking, it's like how, like the, the, the average person, you know what their mindset is. How am I supposed to, how am I supposed to survive an environment like this when rates are at 16%, 70%, 18%? Uh, it's all doom and gloom. Um, and so there was a lot of like negativity and, uh, and just a lack of hope, a lack of optimism. And so what Todd Duncan said was he began to analyze the situation. He's like, he knew that mindset was important. And he's like, I, I'm, I'm going to like embrace what, where things are right now. I'm going to embrace it and I'm going to try to leverage that for good. And so what he did was he, he created a little, a button. And so he was, you know, he wore a suit and tie. He, he wore this button on his suit jacket and it said something like rates are at 16%. I'm excited. Ask me why. And, um, and like, of course, like that, that's a conversation starter. So everybody he's talking to wants to know like, well, why are you excited? And so then he would begin to articulate like, yeah, like it is a tough environment right now. There are challenges, but like there are solutions to uh, the issues that are out there. And there are still people that are buying homes. There are still people that are, that are, uh, that need a mortgage. And he wants, so he's like, yeah, the market has shrunk, but I want to get my piece of the pie. And, and having an optimistic mindset uh, was the key to that. So I love that story because like, um, you know, right now we're in an environment, you well know that like rates have been crazy low. They've been low for so long and, um, you know, they start to go up and I just laugh. I'm like, you know, if rates go up to 5%, uh, so many people would like freak out. And it's like, when I, when I was originating, rates were at eight and a half. And I was like, that was amazing. Cause I was used to selling 15%. And so, um, 
anyway, embracing an optimistic mindset uh, is going to be really, really critical in 2022. Um, you know, the mortgage market is is uh, projected to be down 25 to 30 percent in 2022 versus last year, and so the market is shrinking. Interest rates are going to be on the rise, and like there's a huge difference between being optimistic in your mindset to help you identify solutions for your customers um, versus doom and gloom and embracing that and just kind of um, being swept away by the negativity. Right. Yep. Rising above it or, or going down with it. Yeah. Cool. Well, I won't keep, keep you. I know you're a busy guy, so I appreciate your time, Jay. And uh, I think that was good information. So I really appreciate it. You bet, man. Hey, thanks for having me on today, bud. All right. Talk to you soon.